Welcome back, everybody, to the fourth part of my spell review series, um, where me and the guest look at the spells of the different factions uh, and talk about how to use them, how to effective they are, and at the end we rank them on a list, on a tier list from S to D. And today my guest is the good old uh, fella, good fella. Say hello, hello. good fella. Hello, good yes. fella. Good, good job, the legendary English YouTuber, kinda. Nice. Legendary. Legendary, definitely. At least someone's bigging me up, finally. <laughs> and today we would uh, we'll take a look at Goodfellas' favorite faction, which is Imnatus. Yay! And yeah, let's start. Let's get to it. Um, and the first spell is on the left side of tier 1. We have Priest of Manwe, and it casts a priest that knocks enemy units over. So, what do you think, good fella? Well, I, I've had a little think um, because when you uh, messaged me if I wanted to do this, I was on—I was driving home from work. Um, it, well, I wasn't—I wasn't on my phone while I was driving. Just before I set off, I set my phone and I saw it. And then on the drive home, I was thinking about it. And the more I think about it, the Amlarge's spell book—I really like it. I think that the spells kind of work really well with each other. Um, but they're—they're they're kind of—they're kind of really specific to certain situations. So in some situations, the spells are really great. And then in other situations, they're not necessarily that great. I personally think the Breeze of Manwe is good um, for a defensive spell. So if you need to, if you need to like um, slow an enemy down so you can retreat from them easier, or if you've been surrounded, sometimes the yes. Breeze of Manwe can, can work to like kind of push the enemies away and then escape. The only thing with that is it doesn't necessarily work every time. So if, you'll get, if you've been surrounded and you use the Breeze of Manwe, well, often it, y y your your units still can't move. So if you get surrounded, you can't move, and then they just get flanking damage, and then they just completely get wrecked. Sometimes you use the breeze of Manwe, and even if you use it like in the right place, and you try and push them away rather than pushing more into your units, they still kind of can't move and they get stuck. So sometimes it just yeah. doesn't it doesn't work. If yeah. if you're if you've got archers and you're targeting the archers, uh, the archers are targeting units. And then you knock down the unit. It's like, like, let's say you're this cav trying to attack you. You can knock the cav down and then target the cav while it's on the floor uh, because of the breeze of Manway and pick up a kill on a battalion. That's really useful. But often when you're using the swords and you use the breeze of Manway and then you tell the swords to attack, they kind of just derp out and they don't know how to like attack when they're on the floor. And then it just gets wasted because they get back up and they run away. I don't know if you've ever experience that or, or if it's yeah i mean uh, yeah swords no can sometimes have like troubles attacking with these spells like also when and obviously when uh, chasing swords can have problems with attacking yeah. so it's yeah that's true um it so was... I, I i like so for me personally yeah. i can't i can't rely on it to to like catch an enemy with swords i can't no. rely on it to save my swords because it doesn't always work but I can rely on it to knock down a battalion, particularly of Cav, and try and pick it off with archers, because the archers never have any problem with shooting it. And then the other slight benefit that it has is, let's say your enemy is like maybe pushing your outpost, and you need a little bit of extra time to get some more units to the outpost to defend, or you need that little bit of extra time to, to get a hero out, then it can be used for that. But the amount of time that you gain from pushing the army over it's only a few seconds so that often isn't that useful either yeah i mean yeah if you now you can get in time then can be good get yeah. in time so, so, I, so, like, think... I, I feel like i feel like the theory of it is <laughs> is like a or s tier but in practice it doesn't always do what you think it's I've... going to do so it sometimes can be unreliable well first of all i don't think the defensive use is not i mean still useful defensively like for Imletus, it's so important at the early game to keep your units alive. If you use yeah. one sword battalion as Imletus in the early game, you are at a massive disadvantage. So Priest of Mana can theoretically save that sword battalion, for example. If it's surrounded, it, I mean, sometimes it doesn't work, but if it works, like the try is still worth it, I think, I guess. Yeah, that's that's the thing. If it works, like I will always get it every single game. Yeah. And if it works, it can win you the game sometimes, but... It's so it's so unreliable that sometimes yeah. it, it you know it's not I don't think it's, for me personally it's not worthy of ARS I'll probably put it in maybe B yeah because when um, it does work it's amazing but 
it's not that reliable. Yeah, so um, another thing I want to mention, it like it knocks all units in one direction. So, and it can be sometimes of when you fight, take a fight, uh, sometimes it can knock the units in your army. And you're like, May, maybe that's a good thing, but sometimes if they survive, then you're going to have your units inside the enemy army. So that's something to look out for. <laughs> Exactly. So sometimes it can actually be detrimental. That's yes. the thing. Sometimes, like, 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 if you use it, and then you get you just surround yourself in units, and then largest can't be surrounded, otherwise they die. So, uh, but that's yeah. probably that's probably misusage more than anything. But again, it's it can be unreliable. Yeah. So sometimes you feel like you're putting it in the right place, and then all of a sudden you're surrounded and your army's dying. Yeah. So I think it's uh, a pretty good spell. Um, it's just one spell point, so. It yeah. takes a while to recharge, it takes longer than most tier 1 spells. So I I would also say like A or B. Um, Goodfellow already said B, so I think I can agree with that. Uh, and then on this, the second spell we have is uh, the good old heal, or it's called Miro, Mi Miro War. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so it heals uh, your units for 30% of the health and it replaces one member per battalion. And it's the good old Imletus here. Uh, Immortus yeah. obviously is the faction, the last faction with the heal, uh, in 4.5 now. The other yeah. factions don't have heals anymore. Um, and it usually always like because one Immortus soldier is worth so much, um, more than most soldiers. It also always like used to be the best heal in the game in a way, mm -hmm. even though it was the same from. Uh, Everyone the other had factions. a heal. Yeah, Immortus is better because of the small battalions. Because of, exactly. So it's can obviously it can keep your battalions alive longer in the fight, or if you want to save a battalion if it's like retreating, it can also help you save a battalion. Which yep. um, so that's pretty useful. Um, yeah. And also obviously you can save heroes with the heal. Exactly. Um, would you like to add something? So yeah, thirty percent heal is amazing in itself like you say, to, to help your heroes, make your heroes even stronger. I know this, is, this isn't necessarily part of it, but um, Arwen also gets a heal on all heroes. So yes. like, it's like another heal on top of that. So it, it makes your heroes like super, super um, tanky and easy to keep them alive, as long as your micro is decent. Um, and the 30% heal, when, the, when obviously um, heroes have got a lot of health, so 30% of their health back is quite a lot of health, the enlarged units themselves have also got quite a lot of health. So 30% of the health is a lot. You know, compare that to like 30% yep. of an orc, orc's health. It's like, <laughs> anything, but, but when they've got high health anyway, 30% is a big deal. But exactly. ev even bigger of a deal is the replenishing one unit in the battalion. So if you go from five units in, in the enlarged battalion to four, that's like one fifth of your damage output and your tanking ability gone. You can then just instantly re replace that. And what I like to do if I'm in a close fight is I'll wait for one of my units in the battalion to die. And then I'll wait for another unit in that battalion to get onto red health. And then just before that second unit dies, yeah. I'll then do the heal. So it heals 30% of the guy who's damaged and it brings back a new guy at full health. And it's really, really strong. It's it's almost like it's almost like you're getting back nearly like <laughs> two thirds of your battalion if you if you use it in that way. It's like you you get back two thirds of your battalion. It's like having you know like two thirds more of, of the battalion out there, um, or maybe not yeah, two thirds. It's, it's slightly two thirds might be a bit too. <laughs> so much. Maybe, maybe maybe more like maybe like one third or something. Forty percent, yeah, something like that. Um, so yeah, I, would, I, would, um... I would say straight away. For me, this would just go in, into S tier. It's so strong for me. When I, when I go for my builds with Imlargis and I go for the Author Halls for the fast recharge, the main reason is 30% extra heals. You know, I mean, if it saves a hero, like that's a lot of value for one yeah. spare. And it saves units, you know. And it saves like, units. It, it, it saves units. It helps you steal creeps. It helps you harass. It helps you do everything in the game, every single game. That I that I play, unless I try to do like I was talking about with the Breeze of Manway and trying to disrupt the uh, troll creep, this is one hundred percent of the time either my first spell or my second spell. Um, so yeah, I would say this is S tier yeah, for me. I and yeah, I I think I can also agree with S here. It has a pretty low recharge rate as well. One of the best spells I would say in the whole of the day for me, strongest spells at least. Yeah, very. 
yeah, a lot of a lot of value once again. Like obviously the T one spell is only one spell point, so let's carry on to the tier two spells. Yeah. And on the left side we have a, a very interesting one. We have Journey to Valinor, and it's a uh, uh, it's like it's uh, it's a good counter to certain things because what it does is it uh, summons a resting camp, which is like a building and. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of health, but what it does is protects it protects your units from magic and elemental damage, and also prevents uh, resources and experience gain for your enemy. And like the uh, the the especially the damage uh, protection against magic and elemental can be pretty useful in certain situations. It's a yeah. pretty situational spell. So for example, yeah. some it can be useful against uh, other spells like the famously. By now, maybe you can counter a uh, ten spell point power, uh, the army of the dead, with it because they deal entirely de magic damage. But also, like some heroes, deal magic damage. AOEs usually often like hero AOEs are often magic damage. So yeah, and, and you know, do you know what else it counters? Um, poison. <laughs> yeah, and who uses poison? Gulsa. Shelob. Shelob. And she wrecks in largest usually. If you throw up a um, a resting camp, yeah. then she doesn't deal any damage with the normal attacks because she does, she deals poison damage in like the AOE. So it's super useful. I mean, it it doesn't help against her little uh, against the spiders. Like That's yeah. Okay, I actually but, didn't know that. Well, yeah. So like, it's really useful in a Mordor game to put it up, especially when you combine it with the flood power later on, so that you can use the flood. Yeah, we will get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I agree with you that it's very kind of like situational. Um, it's amazing to stop the magic damage. Yeah, it's... so like like a good a good counter to enlarge is, is like fire arrows, frost arrows, uh, silver yep. thorns. So it counters all of that. Um, it counters Shelob in the early game. It counters Army of the Dead in the super late game. The only thing that I would say is um, I because it's a new spell and people aren't used to it. I've, I have a feeling like in the meta, it's probably going to kind of fall off a little bit because let's say, for example, you're, um, you're playing Gondor against an Emlardrist. <laughs> yeah. You, you've got Army of the Dead ready to use, but you know that their resting camp completely uh, nerfs it, uh, completely stops it from dealing any damage. Well, your priority then is just going to switch to, well, can I just snipe the resting camp? And then as soon as I have sniped it, then the army of the dead is going yeah. to deal lots of damage. So I feel like if people thought about it a little bit, it would be way less effective against army of the dead. Because if you're playing Gondor, you probably got a lot of upgraded <laughs> cap by that point. By the by the point you get to army of the dead, you could make army of the dead appear. They do the resting camp. Then you charge in with the cav, snipe the resting camp, and then um, and then it's going to not deal as much damage. I guess I it guess in logic, a... try and surround around the the resting camp, but you could always just you know throw away some cav. Just to snipe it, and then the army of the dead will just kill everything else. That's it has a pretty low amount of health, I think, fifteen hundred. Yeah, so yeah. it can be uh, destroyed pretty fast. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like at the moment it's really strong, especially against army of the dead. But there are, I can see easy ways that people will work out how to counter it. So in the future, it's probably not going to be as good as it is at the moment. Um, and, yeah. And, and a, a lot of the thing with uh, Mlardus a lot of the time is as well, like sometimes they just need to retreat. So. If you are forced to make the resting camp, you have to fight near it, and sometimes you, it's just not worth it to fight in that situation because you might just die anyway, even despite having yeah. the magic damage. It's like if, if, you're, like, like if you're playing it's against Ordnor, and, and Shelob comes up, and you use it to counter Shelob, but then you get surrounded by orcs and you die <laughs> anyway, then it's not really done its job. So yeah, it's it's a it's a bit of a situational one. Yeah. So in general, I would say to spell. Uh, it, like uh, yeah, it's pretty much situation obviously. So it's either pretty good or it doesn't really do a lot for you. Yeah. Um, the experience denial uh, isn't bad. Like uh -huh. it's a pretty useful aspect, I think. But um, it's not like it's not enough to justify a spell, I think, on its own. Yeah. I would yeah, probably so... say I, I don't know, maybe like a maybe like a C. C. I. Although, although, I would... although people might. I would go yeah. higher. I would go to B, I think, because it yeah. can be very useful. It comes back relatively quickly. So I think it's still at least a B for me. Yeah. And I'm going to put it in B. Uh, the second tier 2 spell, the aggressive one, 
It's also really strong. Uh, it's pretty, really strong in my opinion because it's the hobbits. Uh, so it summons mm -hmm. three battalions of hobbits. What and Goodfellow? What yeah. do the hobbits it, do? <laughs> Uh, this has always been considered like a super duper strong uh, yeah. spell. So back it back in four point four point one, it would be the choice between Breeze of Manway as your second tier or the Hobbits as the second tier usually. Um, and I I feel like they are they are they are super strong. They can be countered in certain situations though. So is they, with yeah. with any with any melee summon or ranged summon, it's very easy to just retreat from them. So you can summon them in some of them in one place, but they're not necessarily going to kill anything because oh. the 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 enemy, if he's playing smart, is just going to retreat because they are really really strong. They deal super high damage. So if the enemy sees them, and you're going to be using them probably near your enlarged clump most of the time, if they see an enlarged mm. clump and hobbits, well then they just retreat, and yeah. then then your your hobbits haven't really done much other than gained you a little bit of map control in one part of the map. Yeah, so the hobbits they have two modes, um, which and usually you would use the stone throwing mode. I think it's just yeah, it's easier to use, right? Like usually you already have units fighting in melee with Imnatus, yeah. and the stones just they deal a lot of damage. They get faster if they target a single unit after a while. Uh, and yeah, like I think you can combine it with priest of Mandel to like. If you want to yeah. snipe something specifically, yeah. you can like knock it over, and then you have all your hobbits. Uh, you get three battalions, by the way, uh, of hobbits. You can uh, have them throw the stones at them, and that should probably get rid of it. Definitely. Can do a good amount of damage against heroes as well. Just... Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's something that they're great at, is if, if a hero is on like low red health, you can just kill them. like. If you if the hero is retreating into the clump and you can no longer hit it with your melee units, you can summon the hobbits on the other side of your. So if you're if you're in largest compass on one side and then the enemy's army is there in the middle, you can summon it behind the enemy's army and then you can just ev put them all on stone yeah. throw and target the hero and and you can just snipe it pretty easy. Even if Cav come in to try and charge the hobbits, you can usually pick up the kill on the hero if it's low enough health. So that's a situation mm. where they're really really good. Another situation where they're really good is um, when the enemy is forced to defend a certain point or is attacking a certain point. So if yeah. the situation is, is that the enemy is, is not in his advantage to retreat and he, and he needs to fight or he wants to fight somewhere, then they're really good. I mean, for most summons, like, uh, usually if you want to have summons you, uh, that are against army, uh, you want to like either surround the enemy army or have it in a fight where you know your neither player wants to retreat exactly um yeah or either player doesn't want to retreat so um yeah like this, in summary a very strong a very high damage output um but it can be vulnerable to like cuff but even then it's like uh if like your units are attacking the hobbits then they're not attacking your army and still yeah. takes and time you can, still, you can still pick up kills on the cuff exactly you can because of the trample deceleration, there's quite a lot of them, and they can still be getting getting some kills yeah. on some of the units in the battalion. Anyway, so it's a very strong sum for me. It's at least yeah. an A. What would you say? Yeah, I would. I would probably say that it is an A. Um, just because, like again, like any like any melee summon, you can retreat from it, and in certain situations, it's not not the most useful because your enemy just runs away and it doesn't really do anything. I guess you could argue that you should save it for later, but. Um, <laughs> a, a lot, a lot of the time, a lot of the time, whenever you summon it, they're just going to retreat, yeah. like this, because you can't force them to fight sometimes. So, I would probably right. say, I would probably say it's a like, like, like you were saying, like a lot, most, most summons, that's the case. But something like Yolo Cav, if you summon that, then <laughs> yeah. sometimes you, you summon that just for to get some more kills on a retreating army. The hobbits don't have that ability, but they are still really strong. So I would, I would probably say a. Yeah, I think yeah, a I think is good. And then we have the central power of Imnatus, which uh, this one is pretty simple. It's the Sanctuary of Knowledge, and every unit uh, gathers double experience and have 25% less ability cooldown. So yeah. um, the level up bonus boni in uh, Edain currently are pretty strong. Mm -hmm. It's like plus 15% to armor, uh, to health and damage each level up. 
which is quite a lot, especially for like Imnatus units. So that just uh, so Sanctuary of Knowledge gives them way easier time to level up. Mm. And yeah, it's a pretty simple spell, but it's pretty effective, I would say. Or it's just a good passive buff. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I actually, in some team games and in a few 1v1s, um, I actually experimented with this to try and see how much of an impact it has. Because um, obviously, as you know, now that I'm retired, I only play Emeladris. Yeah. I'm a casual Emeladris noob now. <laughs> but uh, but I, I did experiment with it to see like how effective it is. So in team games, um, it can be really good because it can get your Lindens to level 10 super fast. And like, like we were talking about in Discord, the, the boost that they get from leveling up yes, is really, really strong. it's very high right now. Um, they can still be killed, though. So that experience, it builds up. But then as soon as they die, that experience is then just gone. Uh, particularly in team games, if you're facing like Mass Cav. Obviously, if you, if you, never, if, if you never lose your Lindens, then that experience buff is a big benefit. However, I, I'm not I'm not 100 confident on on how effective it, it has been for a couple of reasons. So the so like <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit like, hard re- to measure, probably. Yeah, reason number one is like um, is that obviously if your units ever die, uh, this I think I think the best case scenario for it is probably in a team game when you know it's going to go on for a long time and you can get that experience mm-hmm. and try and keep your units alive. The only problem is often they do end up dying because you you get 2v1, you get 3v1, you get rushed by mass cav and all of your stuff just dies anyway. Um, And then the other thing to consider is like, yeah, it's nice to have three level 10 Lindens. It's really (laughs) nice to have three level 10 Lindens. um, And if you keep them alive, but then it's, it's, it's still good and it's still really effective to just have three like level two, yeah, level three. Level Lindens. five Lindens, I guess. And, and, and again, the more important equivalent. thing is the more important thing is just keeping them alive. Like for me, that's the most important thing. And the experience isn't that much of a big deal. Now, maybe I might change my opinion when I've realized how much of a buff <laughs> that it does give each level because it's, it's been increased a bit. But I've, and I've never found it super effective to go for it. And then the other thing to consider is that you're spending four spell points on it. So like, yeah, obviously, if I've got the spell points to spend, I'm going to buy it. But if I buy this spell point for, for four spell points, what am I sacrificing? I'm sacrificing either getting the Flood, which is going to just completely kill an entire army in one go, which is better than twice the experience. Because don't forget, you will yeah, still get experience. Um... You're just going to get it slower. Whereas this one gives you experience, but faster. Or I could get like Luthien, or I could get Bombadil, which are really, yeah, really good um, spells. So it's like, what think... are you sacrificing to get for that? Right. So I wouldn't, yeah, um, like I wouldn't get it before I got like either Hobbits or Journey of Valinor and the first two yeah. tier one spells, right? So, and afterwards so, you have the tier three spells at your ability exactly. that you can get. Exactly. And that's the thing, like it's a passive, and like pretty much all passive, it's like a thing that adds up over time. But but look look at look at um, compare this spell to Gondor's formations. Yeah, um, Gondor's formations. It Gondor's might not formations be the, it might give not you an immediate buff. One. Yes, and that's yeah. very good. Yeah, that might not be the the number one priority. You might want to get a couple things before that, but it's definitely a priority. It's like pretty soon I'm gonna have to get this. You might you might decide to maybe go earlier eagles, maybe even earlier army of the dead. But it's a big priority for me. This spell is usually the last spell that I will get. Yeah, I, um, I, I do, because, so... because every other choice, it's not that it's a bad spell, it's just that Enlarges the spell book is really strong. So, every other spell is just probably better uh, advantage for me to have. It's right. like I'm not going to complain about having double experience, but when I get experience no. anyway, and then the other thing is it does give 25% so ability I... cooldown. I'm not sure if that actually is working at the moment <laughs> or, or if it's just that I'm not noticing it because 25% okay, I ability want to... cooldown is not massive. Yeah, what I wanted to say about that is like if you have um like if you if for the most part like the abilities are most useful on your normal swords and your normal spears, I guess sometimes too. Yeah. Um the thing is usually like if you have already both abilities for those, which are pretty easy to get, you need the library and then you have like one research, it's probably like it's usually the first library research you're gonna do anyways, because the other two yeah. One common effect. So, and then if you have both those abilities, then you're probably at least gonna have one ability at your disposal in every battle. Like, yeah, yeah. it's possible that you don't have an ability 
at the both end cooldown, but it's like for that to be the case, you would have to be basically constantly in battle with every unit. Yeah. So I don't think yeah. the and those are the most effect like the best uh, abilities. Um, there's the calf one, which is pretty good, I guess. Yeah. So, so for... this this is how this is how, how I've experienced the abilities with Oblogis in playing them quite regularly. Um, number one, the sword the sword um, abilities are amazing. And they come um, back fast with, with a plus, already. Yeah, plus plus twenty five percent armor, plus twenty five percent damage. Let's say let's say I use the plus twenty five percent armor and it's buffed my units. By the time that that buff is finished, then I can use my damage buff after that. And then by the time that damage buff is finished, it's only like a few yeah, seconds until the armor much, buff is basically um, back again. Just left. Yeah, and then 25% extra of an already fast recharge, it's not that big of a deal. I think the calf one, the calf ability do takes a while to reload. So Yeah. Uh, but other than that, uh, the ability cooldown isn't that much of a deal. And the experience like we already established it's nice but it takes a while and you have to like decide like if you are uh, in like the mid game or maybe even the early game like in the early game it's like well do you really want to have more experience against hobbits or journey to valinor and in the mid game it's like do you really want to have more experience against like uh lufian or protection of the and queen it, and it's it's a really weird one because at, at the early stage of the game when you might consider getting it you're like right um, so so we're, prob we're probably going to have a long game here, so I can get a lot of experience for my unit, so I might buy it. Although having said that, I might just, I, at any moment, I might get 2v1 or I might get like some mass cav trampling into me. So I'm going to lose all that experience anyway, and I don't really know how the game's yeah. going to go yet. Alternatively, I could just get these amazing hobbits and Breeze of Manway and snipe the pikes and then just be winning right now. Yeah, and me winning here. now is, is better for me in the long term anyway. So that's the yeah, issue. Yeah, so it. I think... Um, and then the, 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 the last thing about the cav is like, yes, you can use the ability to make them better, but even without the ability, <laughs> they're still cav. Okay. They still do their job. So, yeah. So I think um, I I I also don't really think it's that good. So maybe uh, would put it in C tier. Um, yeah. Like the oh, I, would be, I would even be tempted to put it in in D tier personally because it, it is it, it's not bad. It's not bad, and I and so, I would obviously want to have it but it is the last thing that i would it, get almost every game yeah um i'm honestly not like i can see that yeah i'm gonna but, but then, maybe is, put it in the okay i think yeah, yeah, exactly. this is like a spell where i'm like willing to go a bit higher theoretically but i yeah. really don't have like if you think about it, it doesn't seem that strong um, but maybe it's like stronger than we realize. Like it's, maybe, it's, yeah, may, yeah, maybe it's just not been realized how strong it is. I mean, the comments can correct us on that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I don't think it's like uh, even if it turns out to be like better than we think. I don't think it's like better than a B. No, like, it's not better than Breeze of Manway or the... exactly not better than, yeah. and definitely not better than like Corbett's or here. No. So, yeah, but very interesting central power. Then we have another passive ability, so we're getting to the tier 3 spells now. We have Influence yeah. of the Evening Star for 5 spell points, which is, uh, like I said, a passive. And it's yeah. a hero buff, it buffs your Arvin, and she gains plus 50% armor. Um, she has double, uh, twice the health generations and 30% faster ability regeneration. And uh, yeah, so Arvin and nearby heroes gain that buff. Heroes yeah. that are near Arvin. So, what do you think, fella? <laughs> I've got absolutely no idea about this spell because I never hero spam, so I it's, never get uh, it because it's worthless to me. I only yeah, ever if you don't have heroes, it's... Right, so... Um, no, I'm yeah. joking. No, I, I get Arwen all the time, and I get... Uh, it's good. It's a good spell. It's a good um, spell in theory. Like, if you have heroes, then... Yeah. Um, if, if, if you've gone the... This is, this is what I'm talking about with the largest <laughs> spell book. It's interesting because it's it's good in certain specific scenarios. Obviously, if you've not gone for heroes, then it's completely worthless. But if you've gone for heroes, it's like really, really good. Plus 50% armor. That's kind of crazy. And 30% um, ability regeneration. So that 30% re uh, ability regeneration you've got to consider is Arwen and all of the people around her. So that means that Arwen's going to get 30% extra uh, heals for heroes. 
Yeah. It also means um, Elrond, once he gets to level seven, has got 30% extra uh, ability to recharge that heal. <laughs> plus, you've got the heal from the spell bug. Plus, you might have discounted that by 30% with the author halls. So if you if you want to go for heroes and being able to keep your heroes alive, this spell just just like it gives you like a lot, yeah. extra like fifty percent healing it's, ability. Like if you have leveled heroes, it's gonna be very hard to take them down with the spell. Yeah. Um, there are also some other abilities which are really strong for Imnatus. For example, Glorfindus level ten, which just yeah, stuns exactly. enemy units for thirty seconds, I think. Like or yeah. like it periodically stuns them. Yeah, and it's great. The Weakness of the spell or the like downside for Imnatris, it's I think a little bit harder. Like the heroes aren't in there insane, and it's also a little bit harder to protect the heroes with like the amount of units Imnatris has. Yeah. So um. So yeah, I think Errand is a, is pretty vulnerable if you get him first. Uh, if you get him, at, uh, Arvin is relatively easily killable. I mean, she's mm -hmm. also not that expensive. Um. Gilda is obviously amazing, as everybody knows, yeah. but that's not really there. He won't really benefit as much from the spell because thirty percent more farsight. I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess that. I also don't really usually go for heroes of Imnatris. Um, I don't think it's the strongest thing to do for Imnatris, which makes no. like In the Imnatris heroes aren't a good if they're leveled, I guess. But yeah they, it can it can get strong like like every hero spell. yeah it can get it strong can like get every strong. hero spell and then the spell yeah. will be amazing mm -hmm. at that point for so, me i would probably put this one in b tier i would also go here it's, tier. yeah it's a it's bit of a hard really card but it's not yeah. bad of definitely not bad it's really strong in certain situations in other situations if you haven't got any heroes obviously it's useless but yeah that's it's, obviously also good it, it's good side. enough in in the scenarios where it's used that it should be in you also need Arvin, obviously. So if you get if your enemy snipes Arvin, um, that's another downside. Right, and then the second spell on the defensive side, we have Protection yeah. of the Bruin. And you already mentioned the spell, so I'm gonna yeah. let you explain this one. Yeah. So this this is like an AOE attack, one of the few AOE attacks that Adain has, um, that apparently deals a hundred magic damage. So this is enough to one shot orcs. Yeah, per and, horse, and, I think. And if horse, I'm not, if back, I'm not mistaken, that, but I think yeah, correct. and you get quite a lot. You get like six horses that come out, exactly. and it kind of spread. It, it, it kind of spreads out from a building. Um, against Mordor, it's it's better in some cases than even um, the Last Alliance. The Last Alliance is better at killing the base, but in terms of just pure army killing, this spell is just incredible. You just you, you, the the Mordor clump comes near your building. You use it, and it all just dies and melts away. It's incredible. Um, so in a Mordor matchup, um, it's very often something that I, I go for. You can also use it offensively. So you get the resting camp, you put that near the army, and then you instantly click on the, um, on the whatever it's called, uh, uh, protection yeah, of the Yeah, you use the protection of the Bruin. And then the it, just, it just shoots right into them. And it's so quick that you can't respond to it. Like, there's, there's not really a counter for it for Mordor, other than just trying to not clump. But well, no Mordor player does that <laughs> in the meta. So you just I mean, you Mordor can't clump, really not and then you clump. Just use it. And if this, is another, yeah, this is another reason why the 30% extra recharge is so good. Because this thing isn't, is, <laughs> it isn't that long of a, of a recharge. You can use it, even though it's like a. It costs three. Uh, it costs six spell points. It's like a tier three. It's um. It's so powerful that you can just use yeah. it. Um, it it actually comes can... back very far faster than yeah, most tier three spells. So yeah, even without yeah. offer hordes. Yeah. So you right. can use it like a good three, four times in an average length of game, and it's crazy strong against Mordor. <laughs> against other factions, it's less good. Yeah, I think the knockback is also worth mentioning here. So. Like, it deals a good amount of damage uh, against certain factions. Can deals uh, knockbacks to enemy units, which can be also very useful. Yeah. And heroes, uh, I think so. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I agree with, like, the AOE here. is strong against certain factions. Um, can be used offensively with the resting camp. So, yeah. you have to summon it on a building. Um, but And then there's also the another effect of the protection of the Bruin, which is that the building gets invul vulnerable for one minute. Yeah. Uh, so 
That one isn't that strong. Um, I mean, no. no. Uh, the thing is, the AOE is usually most effect uh, like you usually want it in while you're fighting, right? Like yeah. you don't just AOE like harassing units and then don't have a follow up to that. Yeah. So it, uh, that that one minute invulnerability is one of those things that kind of sounds good, but in reality doesn't really yeah. mean anything. So if you're if you're getting your I mean, outpost, if you're let, let's use that as an example. Yeah. You're you're defending an outpost and it's being pushed by an enemy. So you, you use the um you use the spell to make it survive for a minute extra. Well, if you're getting your outpost pushed, they're either just gonna continue to fight your army and just ignore the building, they're gonna attack other buildings, and it, it doesn't really matter that it that it survives an extra minute. Like like yeah. what building what bu the only building that I can think of that, that would be useful for is like maybe a well if they want to try and snipe your well before they engage. But a lot of people often don't do that anyway. Maybe a tower so that that can continue to output damage. But if, you're, if your outpost is being pushed, it means that the, the enemy is usually confident enough to win despite the well and despite the tower. Otherwise, they wouldn't be trying to push your outpost. Uh, I think, yeah, I think the invulnerable is a bit stronger than you would, you are seemingly saying. Um, but yeah, the, the damage is definitely more important in general. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a good spell if you have Journey of Valinor. <laughs> I would say I would say in almost ninety percent of cases though you would have exactly I, I think you would always have twenty four in order. So yeah. Um, yeah, pretty strong effect still yeah. overall. Um I'm not sure. I think this might be another B though. Yeah. For me for me against more situation once it's again. Like it's like against, it can be good. Mordor, it's like S. But against everybody every other factor exactly. it's probably like a B. Then yeah. on the aggressive side, and we have for six spell points, we have Tom Bombadil, which summons Tom Bombadil, which is an AUE hero basically. So mm -hmm. he deals AUE damage, and Bombadil isn't that strong currently. No. Like, yeah, it's, he's only really good against uh, weak units, I guess. Yeah. Can die pretty easily, I think. Mm -hmm. Which can be a detriment. Like, if you. you lose your uh, summoned hero, that's a lot of experience for the enemy, which might go to his heroes. Like, that can be two level ups alone. Which can be pretty... So you have to be careful with, like, your summoned heroes. Like, and Tomba Biddle is pretty easy to kill. Or yeah. easy to lose. If you keep him safe, um, then, yeah, he can survive. But then he also won't do as much damage. What and that's, you that's, not what you, that's not what you really want from a summon, isn't it? You, no. don't, you don't want to summon something and be like, now I've got to be careful that I don't lose it. You want your summon to just have yeah, like... big impact straight away. And for your enemy to be worrying about losing stuff, not you worrying <laughs> about losing the summon itself. Yeah, um, so... I think, I think again, it's a bit situational. It can be useful. Um, he, his, when, he, when he charges through things, I think he reduces the damage by quite a lot. I think it says ninety percent on the description. Oh, I actually, might, don't know. I might, have, I might have got that wrong, but I'm sure Jojo said that it's like a super high damage reduction that he does. Um, so that's re that's really useful through units and reduce the damage if you need to kind of survive with him. Um, however, yeah, like you say, he's not super tanky. He can die quite easily. He does not do a lot of damage. He does yeah. hardly any damage. His his wizard blast is now ranged, but that just is, its damage has been highly reduced. Yes. So you used to be able to kill things with his wizard blast, but not anymore. Um, you you can do um, yeah, it says there look minus ninety percent for ten seconds. Yes. Um, so 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 you can use that. That that again is a bit like a breeze of manway style ability now, where it just knocks units down, and then maybe you can, maybe you can target them and snipe them easier with um, archers or something like that. For me, the ninety percent damage reduction, I haven't felt it. I might, might not have just noticed it being that powerful. Yeah, it but sounds pretty powerful, powerful, but it's yeah, like it only applies to hit units. Um, yeah, only only the units that he hit. So and also, like if he's trampling through the units. Army. Yeah, and if he's like trampling for the units, like that's where he's most vulnerable, which exactly. you don't want. So, so let's let's say the, the best the best scenario I could think of is your enlargers. You're playing against Lorian. Lorian's got a big clump of archers. 
and the micromanagement of the opponent's not that great. So the pikes are away from the archers. So maybe you haven't got cav out yet. You could make Bombadil and just run him through the archers to reduce their damage. Yeah, so I but think he's he's not it's not a permanent reduction in damage. As soon as he's gone, it's gonna come back. He's not gonna get all of the archers, so some of them are still gonna be dealing full damage. You can always just retreat from him as well, because again, like every every other melee summon, you can just retreat from them. There's no reason why you can't. His yeah. his um his jump into the army can be quite decent. Because d- does that give fear or does that not give fear anymore? I can't remember now. I don't think so. Um, I think it's just a jump. So I think yeah, the best scenario kind of is like when the enemy has when you get, can deal damage with a Swiss blast, which but yeah. a lot of but not that great damage. Yeah, like so some factions are not bothered by that, and even then, I think it's not a very good spell. Um, I think it's at least C tier, uh, like C tier or yeah. I think that's fitting. Yeah, I would say C tier as well. So and then yeah, let's get to the last spell. Um, five spell points, and we have Lufian's song, and it summons Lufian on the battlefield um, at this location, and she slows down enemy units. So it starts at yeah. like twenty five percent slowdown, and then at the end of the after like 10 seconds, you have uh, fifth, the enemies are slowed down to 50% or something like that. Uh, and uh, their armor, they basically take twice the amount of damage, double amount of damage. Um, yeah, and she stays for 25 seconds. So, so this is um, can be very good in combat, I think. Um, because uh, so you the armor debuff is not low. Like, uh, she, so she halves the armor, basically. That's... Yeah. Uh, so that's good. Uh, the enemy can't flee. Uh, well, he can flee, but he can't flee as well because the units are obviously slower than your units. Mm-hmm. Um, now, swordmen uh, or general melee units can have a trouble chasing enemy units that are slower. Yeah. Like even if they're half the speed, that can be probably a bit unreliable. But you still have can have like archers, for example, fire a lot. Mm-hmm. So I think generally it's a pretty good spell. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I agree. It's a really good spell. It's it's another one of those cases with like almost like a melee summon where the enemy can retreat, and because it's so strong. Yeah, but I mean, whenever, yeah. whenever Luthien is summoned, if it's a good player playing against you, and as long as they can actually spot it, which if they're a good player, they usually will, they will instantly retreat away from it. Now you can you can make it work so that maybe you've like surrounded them beforehand, although that's difficult with him and Maybe it'll be a good combination with some other summons like the Hobbits or even the Last Alliance, if you can make that happen at the same time. And maybe do a surround so that it's harder for them to retreat. But they will very often retreat. I know you said that they that they slow down and you can probably get a few hits in on the way, but the slowdown yeah. is in the radius. So as soon as you're outside of that radius, um, they can just completely retreat. There's been so many times that I've used Luthien <laughs> and my enemy has just run away and then it's been completely ineffective. And and again, yeah, it can it make prob- it probably could be my my skill could be improved. Yeah, I think you can make it like... more effective of something like Priest of Manva or, or exactly. maybe maybe even Gal- Gil- Gilda's ability, like Gil's level free, yeah, maybe exactly, can help also. Exactly. It's and this is why I like Enlarged Global so much. All their spells work in combination with each other so well. So like Breeze of Manway, so use the Luthien then Breeze of Manway. However, ev- j- those two together, they can still retreat basically their entire army. So you still have time. Yeah. If you use Luthien, then the Breeze of Manway, then they get up, they can still retreat in time. Like like with like with every other melee unit we've talked about, way better when the opponent is, is either forced to stay in one place or is deciding to stay in one place. But again, just yeah, like so before, I think there are a lot if, of if, they're, if they're deciding to push your outpost, to make you, more, make, you make Luthien, well... There's no reason why they can't just retreat and then just come back when when she's gone away and then attack again. Yeah, but I think so, there are a lot of ways to make it more reliable. Um, yeah, yeah. And there's, also, there's like some, it, maybe like in a bit of a, a back positions, which maybe doesn't immediately affect the army, but the whole army, yeah. but like only yeah. a few of them, a uh, part of it. Exactly. It's so always they, a good idea to to put Luthien instead of putting it in the middle of the of your enemy's army. You yeah. want to put it so if you've got your army in one place, then then the enemy's army yeah, is so like it. On you the... want to put Luthien in the last few units at the back of the army so they can't really retreat backwards. Yeah, because so... if they retreat backwards, they're going to retreat into the Luthien spell. 
if you can use that to a good effect, like the, the armor debuff is pretty high. Yeah. And that can be very effective, I think. Yeah. If she works, she's amazing. She's like right. one of the one of the best powers. If if you can get her to work through skill or through, you know, sometimes your opponent is not good. Yeah. So, so I think it's use, fairly reliable. Yeah. Fairly reliable and pretty strong, yeah. uh, which I think would warrant an eight here for me. Yeah, I would say eight here as well. Yeah, if if it. If it was the fact that you use it and it always works, it would definitely be S tier. But there there have been a lot of occasions where I've used I mean, it, yeah. it's retreated, and then it's been worthless. But I mean, it's good that it works that way, right? That you can retreat from it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That it's not just a no-brainer. I exactly. think that's very nice, like the way it works right now. Yeah, it's, it's well balanced. That's what you want Spot like, to be. Yeah, like. it used to be... To it. Right, and those were... Whoops. Uh, those were the other, other spells uh, from tier 3. Yeah. Now we get to the... Finest best, the big boys. Mm -hmm. um, and on the left side, we have something, and a very interesting spell. We have Training of the Firstborn. Uh, right, so 10 spell points, of course. And it essentially it, uh, transforms the barracks or stable uh, into like a version of it that only trains fully upgraded units. So they will yeah. have blades, they will have armor, Burners and also the uh, the what Eregion upgrades, mm -hmm. and that for the same price as the normal unit. So it's really it's a lot of value. Like you have to imagine, like uh, a fully upgraded unit or uh, fully uh, all the upgrades combined probably cost like even the forges are like um, let me think maybe like six hundred resources at least, right? So that's plates, armor, banner carriers, and Eregion plates, for example. Yeah. And you get that basically for free for every unit. So like a unit that would normally cost like 1,100 resources maybe, like an upgraded sword battalion, instead costs 500 resources. Yeah. And you also don't need um, the upgrades themselves. They will have mm -hmm. it even if you don't have it researched. And another way is like if you... Uh, so obviously uh, if you want to go for upgrades, usually you want forges. Mm -hmm. But if you have... Training of the firstborn, then you don't need to have forges because you can just get upgraded units for free or the upgrades are for, uh, for free, so you can go for author halls. So, and, and guess what? Very strong. You get author, you get author halls, and you it's get faster this spell to get thirty percent more often, so you can put it on two barracks instead of one. Yeah, so usually I would put it on uh, like uh, just your normal barracks, right? I, f I think. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yes, upgraded uh, cavalry is obviously very strong, but I think I would I, rather have like an upgraded army instead of definitely. two upgraded cavalry battalions. Definitely. So, what I, my usual tactic with this spell is: first of all, put it on your main barracks. That's the first thing. As soon as you get it. Second thing, you can choose to put it on your stables, which is really, really strong as well. So you can choose to put it on your stables, or if you want to, you can choose to put it on a second barracks. Depends how heavy cav you want to go. Um, but it's super strong on a, on a uh, stables. What I often do is first on my main barracks, then on my stables, then I'll get a second barracks and get it on that if I ever get it recharged again. But honestly, this this should just shoot up straight into S tier. I, I've got <laughs> yes. no no question about like it yeah. Is. I think this will just puts the enemy in a position where like he has to like get in the winning position before the spell gets too strong, before you get too much value because yeah, the, you can just spam value... out upgraded units. The value that you get yeah. out of this spell. 500 resources for heavy armor, double forged blades, right. and banner carriers on a unit when you've had to have no previous investment <laughs> in upgrades at all. It is an insane ability. It is so, so strong. Right. It is crazy. The, the only thing that's like a disadvantage to it is it's not the last alliance. <laughs> that's the disadvantage. It's not the last alliance. Right, okay. Well. You, you can we'll have your you can have your barracks sniped. Exactly. Like, I, like a couple of times, I've had um, Grond go into but... my base and kill it before I've been able to kill <laughs> Grond. That's the only case I've ever had it so that it's been sniped before, though, because yeah, I, you can the thing your is, base from, yeah, from exactly. Any other like threat, basically. That's like the one downside. Uh, or the, like you can counter it very hardly because you have to kill the barracks that's probably in the enemy's base, yeah. like in the castle. Exactly. And guess what? And you, even, you're spending no money on, on units, so buy, a, buy loads and loads of towers. Yeah, exactly. And, and also, yeah, so... 
Right, and you have probably also already have some battalions at least trained from the barracks. Uh, and also, like, if you let it uh, go, if you don't win uh, as the other player after the Immunitus player got that spell, I think at some point, like, you need, to, you need to win quick or you're gonna lose, probably. Yeah. Right, and then we also have the other, the other big boy, the Last Alliance, which you already mentioned. Yeah. So the Last Alliance is uh, a sum, a big arm summon. Sum. It uh, sums a few upgraded Imnatus units and a few upgraded Arnos units. Yeah. And it also sums four heroes. And the heroes basically have uh, anti-building abilities. Yeah. So um, you get Gilgalad. So Gilgalad has an AoE damage. But, mm -hmm. right, Which is you, insane. Yeah, you can insane. use it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, really strong against units. And buildings. Well. And buildings, yeah. It's yeah, it's can it's good against units. Um, if you can get a good hit with it, you can kind of like split against it. Uh, yeah. The alternative use is like it can snipe down buildings, any buildings that you want. You can kill a citadel with this. Yeah, one shot a citadel. So well, after the ability is finished, it's after, a few shots of the ability, but there's no stopping him when, once he yeah, starts doing it. So it's I basically mean, a one shot. Right. There's also Elendil. Um, so he has an ability that. Uh, any buildings have fifty percent less armor <laughs> for mm -hmm. thirty seconds. So mm -hmm. yeah, so you can kind of combine that if you want to. I don't. Like, yeah. I actually don't know if you need to have that ability active for Gilgalad to one shot in Citadel. Do you know I, that? I no. You, I don't think you do. You I'm pretty sure okay. I've, I've just used Gilgalad before and he's just one shot it by himself. Yeah, I, think, I, I I think personally, I... um, I'm, I'm not that experienced with using the abilities of the other guys. Um, yeah, I can see that. Basically, what I do is I'll summon it. I'll just click them all, apart from Gil Gilgalad, and then I'll click <laughs> Gilgalad and do it specifically on something. Yeah, just because just because it adds extra. But the, the, their abilities compared to Gilgalad's is just they're just like kind of meaningless almost. I mean, like yes, yeah, I think Elendi's ability isn't bad. Like fifty percent yeah. armor, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, that does that does sound really good. Maybe it's just because I haven't really like looked into it <laughs> yeah i can definitely get like the the, the um not the anarion is that how you pronounce it Anar i don't his, know his ability he can attack gates for 30 seconds that's actually super strong i've used that before and it's really good because yeah. you use him to attack a gate he does really high damage to the gate too you can actually kill a closed gate then put gilgalad in there and then kill the Citadel. exactly the only thing is, whilst he's attacking the gate, the timer of the last alliance is running down, and the timer of the last alliance is actually pretty slow. For a uh, compare that to like the Ents, who is another kind of like sieging power, the yeah. Ents feel like they last like two times longer than than the last alliance. Yeah, I that's think how it feels to me. the Ents probably not two times, but the last alliance is comes uh, goes away pretty fast. So yeah, but yeah. the last alliance is an, it's an interesting spell because it sums it's, it, it's a big sum. But interestingly enough, the sum, like, I mean, yeah, it can fight, obviously. It can help you in a fight. Yeah. Uh, but interestingly, the heroes are more like, it, it can be also very effective against the base rush, as the base rush spell, which, yeah. or a finisher spell, base finisher spell, which you might yeah. not expect at first glance. Like, what? Uh, these few yeah. four heroes can kill it, be very effective against base, but yeah. Like, like I said, Gilgalad, killing a citadel is ve uh, worth a lot. Because yeah. if it's I, I, because it can deny the enemy spells for that if he doesn't have an outpost, he's gonna have yeah. no spells. Yeah. Right. So I think I think like and um, Anorian basically like in a way uh, gives you like guarantees in a way not guarantees but it makes it more reliable for Gilgar to be able to snipe the citadel because he can yeah. kill the gate. Yeah. So so it's more effective against um, obviously no wall factions like Mordor and Isengard but like you say this this other hero's ability to knock down the gate can allow it so that Gilgalad gets the hit in anyway um the only things that it has in its disadvantages is low recharge um for yeah. me the units the units themselves aren't amazing yeah I also they're, not, agree. they're not the best summon ever it's more to do with the heroes and to be honest the most important hero is Gilgalad for me this whole yes. spell is basically Gilgalad plus some other guys I guess yeah that's, that's what it feels like <laughs> I totally it's, agree it's like the... just was, like, and it's not just the buildings as well. It's like if you get that hit in on an army, even an upgraded army, it just kills them all. First time I saw it, I mm. thought it was like a bug or something. I but think it has I, been nerfed I, a bit. 
I think it's not yeah. as strong anymore. Yeah, I mean, and I you guess can I play. You can uh, like this uh, dodge a bit of the damage if you split your army. But yeah, this yeah. St still deals a good amount of damage to army if you want to use it that way. Yeah. What would you say? I think it's an A tier. Yeah, I don't I would think say at least at least at least A. I would say. I don't think it's uh, incredible, like super overpower. Like it's just very good. Yeah. It's not. It's it's not as good as I don't even think it's as good as like Rohan answers or. No, Armin. no, it's not as good as Rohan answers. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, after that, maybe I don't know. But uh, yeah, Gilgalad makes it at least a tier. Without Gilgalad, it it wouldn't be that great. But with no, Gilgalad, if, it is. I mean, without really... Gilgalad, you couldn't sniper sit it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. Yep. Um, I would like to thank. Noob Feller for being here with me as a guest today. Bitte schön. Uh, da uh, yes, danke schön. <laughs> uh, yeah, and feel free to comment uh, if you disagree or agree uh, with some of the things we said here. Uh, you can disagree with what DSS says, but you're not allowed to disagree with what I say. Uh, okay? uh, That's the rule. Yes. Especially uh, if you're Sparkless. <laughs> no, yes, no. exactly. Um, yeah, and I hope you come back for the next video and have a nice day. Bye. Bye.